Yeah, welcome back to KM6 LYW Radio. This is a show about amateur radio or ham radio with an emphasis on digital or data modes. Hey, the ISS is passing overhead, and I want to emphasize the importance of sat gates, a satellite gate. It's kind of like an eye gate, only for outer space. Let's talk about sat gates. What is a sat gate? How do I build a sat gate? Why won't Craig shut up about sat gates? Let's do that this time on KM6 LYW Radio. Have I done this before? <laughs> yep. All right, so I think that was Ozzy Osbourne. Oh, Lita Ford, it was a combo. If I, I don't know if I've done that one before. Anyways, welcome back. That's our bumper music. Um, so the space station is flying over. It's kind of at its apex right now. And I am right here in the center of California, so I should be receiving packets. We've got the ICOM 705 over here. In fact, uh, I can put it on APRS frequency, and I'm getting, for the United States, I'm getting terrestrial APRS. So the only difference between an eye gate that's terrestrial and an eye gate that's in space is basically just the frequency. So I know you're wondering, well, what's an eye gate? Why would I want to build one? Well, if you go to APRS.fi, you'll see all of this data, everyone's positions. Um, what you don't see behind here is a bunch of messaging, digital messaging happening between radios. I can send text messages to other radios or other radios that are eye gates which are relaying information to maybe other internet services. So eye gates connect the internet data to radio data services, and specifically APRS stuff. So there's digipeters all over the place. A lot of them are just RF, bouncing stuff off of RF. You know, maybe they're high on mountains. Maybe they don't even have an internet connection, but <clears throat> down in the valleys, down in civilization where there's internet, we have these eye gates, and these are just radios that listen all the time, and they forward radio data traffic to the internet for further processing. One example of this is APRS.fi, but you know, it could just as easily be an email address or a cell phone, see my other videos for that. You don't need to have an expensive ICOM 705 to do this. In fact, for the longest time when I was getting into this, all I had, in fact, this was the original Raspberry Pi, and an RTL SDR dongle, and I would plug these in together, takes an SMA antenna adapter and uh, use, actually we've got it right here, how to do this. Uh, install Direwolf on your Raspberry Pi and then there's a config file that basically has four lines here. I'm showing it to you. This is uh, on GitHub on WB2OSZ's website. Uh, documentation for Direwolf, okay? You set up these four lines in a configuration file and then you run RTLFM, which operates this little tiny radio receiver and then pipes the audio of that into Direwolf, and then Direwolf connects up to these uh, uh, iGate servers, and then all of the traffic your radio hears is forwarded to the internet for further processing. And this happens all over the place, all over the earth. It also happens off of the earth, in outer space. Maybe not outer space, maybe the inner part of space, specifically with satellites and where the International Space Station is. And there's a couple other satellites, SO50, the Parkinson's sat that does that. Anyways, the ISS is kind of setting right now. This, I'm gonna flip this over into eye gate mode. Remember we just switched from 14439 to 145. This is it, this is how you turn an eye gate into a sat gate, 145825. Come on, let's get up there. I'm watching the screen. This is weird. This eight two five, and then don't, and then don't bump the dial. All right, and now I should be getting satellite traffic. The ISS is kind of setting. We'll, we'll see how it goes. One four five eight two five. I'm over here on my phone. I can actually run APRS Droid and say send position. I just sent my position. It didn't get digipeated back. It did earlier though. Um, these, this is terrestrial APRS traffic. But yeah, the ISS is setting. We might have dilly dallied, dallied a little bit. So. Now that we're eye gating traffic, we can see all it flowing by here. Um, how do we know how well it's working? Um, we can go out to ariss.net. Let me see if I can find that here. Uh, ariss.net, and it's gonna show you all of the traffic received through the International Space Station. This is the cool part. This is how you know if your eye gate is working. I'm gonna do a quick refresh here. Refresh. Yes, I just got a packet from outer space. Uh, digipeated via, via RS0 ISS. That's how I know it was the space station. Plus, I'm on the space frequency. And uh, this is Marty, uh, N9JTE, via the International Space Station. Uh, he's in Salem, Wisconsin. So I'm in California. I just got a packet from a radio in Wisconsin on my eye gate, uh, my sat gate. Remember, sat gate's just an eye gate on a satellite frequency. Don't try to church it up. It's it's really that simple. So <laughs> back to ariss.net. In fact, that's another beacon. 
probably out of range now. This is only 10 watts. Yeah, it's setting right now. So let's see what happened on ARISS.net. Um, we look at the map here. First of all, we can see KM6LYW uh, over California is on the map. That means that beacon I just sent over out over here was in fact uh, digipeded by the International Space Station and came back down somewhere and went through what? A sat gate, some sat gate in the Americas somewhere. I don't know where. Um, actually, we could find out. Um, we could maybe look that up. So here's KM6LYW. Uh, we look down here, we see it all over the world. We can see the stations that recently digipeded a packet through the ISS. That could have been a beacon position. That could be a message to another person. Um, I do that all the time. I'll get uh, contacts. I think. Uh, I think I've got a contact as far over as uh, Illinois. Uh, in fact, I got a QSL card here from W7. Uh, I can't read it from here. <laughs> a QSL card using the space station uh, to, to do actual QSL. So these are all the stations that made it through. You'll see that yours truly is right here on this line, uh, KM6OYW. That was uh, five minutes ago. And then we can look down even further, which makes it more interesting. I'm going to search for my call sign, KM6OYW. There's that, and then we look down in the actual traffic, okay, and notice where all of these highlighted things are. Wherever you see my call sign after the QAO uh, marker, that means I gated that traffic to the internet, and that's part of the, well, basically the whole reason it made it to this website. And I mean, if it wasn't for my sat gate, you know, maybe someone else would have picked it up, but here we got a, a good morning from Eugene, Oregon, uh, from W7BMH. And uh, you can see that his packet was routed through, let me see if I can zoom this in just a little bit. Ah, can you guys see that? I think, let me scooch this over. How about that? W7BMH, uh, this is the packet where he says, good morning from Oregon. So we can look at the packet itself. Um, it originated from W7BMH-2. It went through a digipeter called RS0ISS, and there's an asterisk there. That means you know it came through the ISS. And then everything after the QAO marker, uh, well, this station after that is my SAT gate, KM6LYW-2. That means this SAT gate was responsible for digipeting or sending that packet from RF over to the internet. Um, Actually, he sent me a message, <laughs> W7BMH. So this, this call sign here was my call sign of my phone right here. And because I sent that packet, uh, W7BMH is like, hey, good morning from Eugene, Oregon. I'm sorry, I completely ignored you. Um, I should have seen that. Let me see, W7BMH, look over on my phone. Here it is, good morning from Eugene, Oregon. Ah. I, mean, I didn't have my notifications turned on or we would have had a, QS, a QSO going over the space station. But anyways, this is a great example of a packet originated in Oregon, sent through the International Space Station. It then came down through my SAT gate and was heard. And uh, this, coincidentally, it was a message to me from, uh, from W7BMH. So thank you for, for that example. You can see so there's some other packets here doing the same thing. Um, here's W7BMH uh, sending out a CQ. And he's in grid CN84. And of course, since I'm after the QAO, that means I sat gated this. So all of these were, were gated by my sat gate, which is called KM6LYW-2. All right, now you know how to build a sat gate. So of course, uh, you know, you can do it the cheap route, um, which is Raspberry Pi and an RTL SDR. This is like 20 bucks. This is, well, these are Raspberry Pis. Hopefully you got one in the drawer because man, good luck buying one of these at retail right now. Supply chain is a very real thing. The struggle is real. Um, so you either do that with a Raspberry Pi or get a really expensive radio if you're totally in a amateur radio like this ICOM 705. And then you can transceive. And then ideally you get a DigiPi, which uh, you get the DigiPi SD card image. Again, it's a Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is the Raspberry Pi Zero format. And the DigiPi is an SD card image that goes to patrons of this channel. And it has all of the technologies we talk about built into it. So usually I'll do demonstrations on the DigiPi. doesn't mean you couldn't build one yourself. Uh, if you go out to digipi.org, you can download that DigiPi image. And again, that's for patrons of the channel, people really into this digital data community stuff. Uh, we'll, we'll get the DigiPi and of course all the build instructions are there. So we built a SAT gate today. How cool was that? Let me make sure I got everything going here. Um, I probably, you probably wouldn't even be seeing this video if it wasn't for the patrons of the channel, guys. Uh, this is kind of overwhelming. So let me switch this. Switch this over here. And I'm gonna zoom this in a little bit. You guys are killing it on the Patreon stuff. So patreon.com slash KM6LYW. 
Uh, thank you for the help. Um, everyone gets access to the Digipi SD card image so we can play with all these cool data modes. Uh, Foo, Steve, NW2W, that's Mark, Ryan, Brian, Jake, Christopher, Tony, Michael, Ian, Jim, Brad, Simon, Buddy Brown, Kevin, uh, Glenn. This list is getting longer and longer. Um, I, I, I don't even have a, a count anymore. Uh, this is fantastic. John Adams, Bob Solomino, Solomeno. You know if I got that right. Craig Larson. Hey, there's another Craig liking it. We got a bunch of Davids. Uh, you know, what's interesting is this is an order of, I think, the longest patronage. And we got three Davids in a row. Hmm. Okay, so we got Ken Gafford, Jeff, uh, Patty, Roche, Ian, Howard, Thomas, Wayne, Don, Dana. Thank you, guys. Dave, Marco, Paul, Jason. Uh, Frozenerd. Frozenerd? You know, if you, if, you, if you have a weird name like Slimy Green... Probably gonna get read on on this channel. So thank you, Paul Taylor, Roger Medley, Alizeth De Akbar. Thank you very much, Sir George Paman, and all the way down to Chris Hurd. All right, this has been another KM6 LYW Radio production. Build those SAT gates, get those out there. I want to see them on ARISS.net. I want to see your call sign out here. Uh, gating traffic from the International Space Station back to the internet. So, uh, you know, for, for bonus here, um, if you could possibly, if you look at my last video, we talked about rig control and changing the channel frequency. What I really want is an eye gate that sits on 14439 most of the time, like all day. You know, and then somehow know when the International Space Station is passing over, uh, at which point it switches frequencies to 145825. I'll get it up there. 145825. And then it's only there for 10 minutes while the space station is overhead, right? And then once the space station sets, it goes back to the terrestrial frequency of 14439. So somebody who is smarter than I am, I, <laughs> that's a lot of you, figure out how to use Hamlib and, ham and rig control to change the frequency of the radio when to 8145825 while the space station is overhead and then switch it back. I think uh, G Predict can do stuff like this. Uh, so G Predict might be a way to go, but it'd be cool to have something all on the command line. I'll work on it a little bit, but if you guys have something that already works, let us know. Um, we'll get it out on GitHub and we'll have an I gate that becomes a SAT gate when the ISS is overhead. How about that? All right, guys, thank you. This is KM6 LYW Radio Craig in California, and I am clear.